when you sign up working with HTTP servers, uh, your procedure for sending requests might look something like this. Uh, you have some kind of fetch API that you're interacting with in order to send an HTTP request. And then you need to put in an address and an object, uh, depending on your HTTP type. And then you have some documentation. For instance, this is a Swagger page for some test API. Uh, so we can send a, a post request and then we get a response back. So we'll just take the address here, copy this and just put in here. And then we need the request DTO. So uh, you might create some kind of model up here. So export interface uh, my request DTO. And here we define some properties. So maybe we have something like title, which is a string. Uh, and then you can say this is optional or whatever. Something that is slightly more convenient is uh, taking the uh, the object here that the documentation describes that you need and then putting into something like a transformer. And then it just outputs the exact TypeScript code that we require in order to have a model that corresponds to what the JSON describes. So we can take this model in here and then just rename it request BCO or whatever. And then we just take the request DTO type here, and then we can fill in all of these values here. So this is one way of doing it. It requires a little bit of manual work, but at least you won't have a lot of typos because you're copying in the title and you're transforming the JSON to a model, which you're also just pasting into your code base. Uh, so here we are circumventing some of the problem that you might have if you're just creating your own model from scratch by just writing the properties yourself and then just assigning values to them. Uh, but there is a more automatic way of doing this. Uh, so there's a library called Swagger TypeScript API. And the philosophy here is that if you have a Swagger page, what you essentially have is just a very long markup of whatever the REST API that you're interacting with is doing. So there is a request and a response for every endpoint. And if we know exactly how to take the JSON input and the JSON output and transform into a TypeScript model, well, then surely that must also be a tool that just does this for us. Swagger TypeScript API, you just install it in PM. So if you open up the terminal and uh, here we just write npm i Swagger TypeScript API. So once you have the NPM install done, uh, you need to generate some boilerplate code that you can actually use for requesting. And the command you need to use here is npx and then the name of the library, Swagger TypeScript API. And then the E flag here you add in and then the argument should be the address of the Swagger page that you're using. So the Swagger page that we're using is this one. And then we need to find the JSON here. So just take this long address here and then just paste it in here. I'll also add in an argument here. Oh, it's best for output. So we need to know where should we output all of this boilerplate code. And then we should we name it? So I'll just name it the api.cs. And then optionally, you can add in two dashes here in order to annotate what kind of uh, HTTP client you want to use. Personally, I do prefer to use Axios rather than fetch because Axios has some really good interceptors. So if we just enter this command here, uh, we'll have the api.cs file generated. So if we go into the api.cs, there's a bunch of stuff in here and you should not modify this yourself. You should just leave the code as it is. Uh, go into app.csx and uh, now instead of uh, making our own model here, we'll just delete all of this stuff really uh, and delete the model up here. So we'll just uh, start off by importing the generated code here above whatever file we're working in. Import API from and then the relative path file. Uh, so now we can just uh, make a const here. Preferably you should do this in a different file such that other components, they might share the same API. Export const uh, my API equals new API. Something that you might need to do uh, over time is add in things like a base URL, because maybe you have a different base URL from your production and your development environment. 
Anyways, when you want to get started making some requests, what you're doing is refer to the my API variable. And then there is, depending on the naming scheme, a, a variable here that's going to be called API. Maybe it's going to be called something else, depending on whatever authors of the REST API decided to name things. But here we have all of the different endpoints. So the thing we tried to do before was a post request. Uh, and by default, it's going to try to name things depending on the HTTP type. So post requests will be named create. So here you just have methods that you call, such as the activities create. And you can see here on the documentation that it actually requires an activity object here. And the activity object is generated itself inside of the api.cs file. So you don't have to make the model now. The model by default is just whatever the JSON object needs to supply. And you're still just working with promises. Uh, so you can still just make an async function here and then make const response equals await. So let's say you want to log the response, you just go response.data uh, and, and here you have it. You can still use uh, generics with dynamic brackets. Uh, so if you want to add in the model here, it should be very clear on the data variable here on the response that this is an activity type. Uh, and it's also visible just based on the uh, signature of the function here. So it's a promise of an axial response of an activity type. You can still write models yourself and map some of these models into your own models. But the idea behind this is to make development contract based. You, the REST API itself it exposes the contract using Swagger and you must comply with that contract. Even if you like to have custom built models with some custom built behaviors, all of the models representing objects going to the HTTP server and back again, they should really just serialize and deserialize from JSON. So they shouldn't really carry any behavior themselves. They should just be responsible for transporting the data. Uh, so you have very little reason not to use a tool like this. And the type safety and the speed that you get from having something like this is amazing. But of course, it's not really a demo if we don't finish it and demonstrate what we have. So I'll just make an object here. Uh, new date to ISO string uh, completed through title hello world and then of course add in a base url up here uh, and currently the base url you can just find here in swagger so everything until here paste that in uh, and then just open up here and uh, here we go this is our post request with this payload and uh, we'll log in the response uh, so so that was basically it a nice and pleasant way to work with a REST API and without having random typos, it's just going to ruin your day.